despite widespread fears of a catastrophic, supervolcano, eruption, scientists at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, have predicted that any eruption there would likely look a lot different than the doomsday scenarios many people envision. Mark Stelton, deputy scientist in charge at YVO, explains that while the idea of a megavolcano, one that would spew vast amounts of ash and lava across the country and beyond, is often overblown, such events are extremely rare. Yellowstone's last supervolcano occurred about 640,000 years ago, and the likelihood of another one happening anytime soon is extremely low. What might happen if Yellowstone were to erupt is hard to predict with certainty, though Stelton offers some insight into some of the more plausible scenarios. A smaller eruption, which is far more likely than a supervolcano, would likely produce a lava flow or dome, which, while dramatic, would be less destructive and pose little threat to humans. It could be a slow-moving lava flow that wouldn't be too dangerous to anyone because they could easily get out of the way, Stelton told Newsweek. I would expect there to be potential for wildfires as the lava erupts at high temperatures. Roads and park infrastructure could be disrupted, but the impact outside of Yellowstone would likely be minimal. Smaller eruptions have occurred over the past 160,000 years or so, with two significant ones occurring within craters, or calderas, formed by previous super eruptions. Sometimes these small eruptions can create small calderas within the Yellowstone caldera, Stelton said. For example, Yellowstone's West Thumb Lake is a caldera that formed during an eruption 160,000 years ago, called the Bluff Point Tuff. Smaller eruptions like that can also be explosive. While they might not send a huge ash cloud across the US, such an event would still create a large enough ash cloud that it could affect the local climate, Stelton said. If a volcanic eruption were to occur, scientists would be able to detect major warning signs well in advance. Large eruptions, and even smaller ones, are preceded by significant geologic activity, such as a series of earthquakes and rapid uplift, movements that would alert scientists and provide crucial time for monitoring and preparation. Yellowstone hasn't erupted in 70,000 years, so it would take some impressive earthquakes and uplift to get it started, YVO says on its website. In addition to large earthquakes, with many earthquakes above M4 or M5, we expect rapid and significant uplift around the caldera, perhaps tens of inches per year. Finally, the rising magma would cause an explosion from the boiling geothermal reservoir. One of the biggest misconceptions about a Yellowstone eruption is the potential for an ash cloud. While a super eruption would spread ash thousands of miles, as a 2014 study published in the scientific journal Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems showed, smaller eruptions behave differently. Ash from smaller eruptions is likely to follow a more localized pattern, with ash falling primarily on and around Yellowstone. YVO urges the public to be prepared for emergencies in general, but there is no reason to be particularly concerned about the possibility of a volcanic eruption. Since its last major eruption about 640,000 years ago, Yellowstone has remained essentially dormant and is likely to remain so for some time. While scientists continue to monitor the area closely, future eruptions are expected to follow a pattern of smaller, less catastrophic events, with minimal regional or continental impact. For now, Yellowstone continues to captivate visitors and researchers with its geothermal beauty, rather than the immediate threat of any major eruption.
Oh, be prepared to run. That's it. 